All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Discovering Multifamily Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Scandariato with Red Knight Properties. And today we're in for a treat here. We're going to talk about a topic that hasn't been discussed on the show, but I think is really, really important given the state of the crazy cryptocurrency market right now versus traditional investments like multifamily real estate and apartment buildings. So I want to welcome Jason Criddle to the show. Jason is the CEO of smarterholdings.com and managing partner. I check him out at jasoncriddle.com. Um, and I just want to get right into it because it's a very interesting topic that I'm really looking forward to and happy to share with my audience. So Jason, thanks for coming on the show. Dude, like, I'm so happy that not only did you nail my last name, but I'm so happy that somebody has a more confusing last name than I do. You know, <laughs> I've been called Crydell and Cridley and whenever I was, I was a kid, people call me Miss Krabappel, you know, but Scandariato, that's, that's unique, man. That's awesome. Hey, thanks. And you said it the right, right the first time. So I got to give yeah. you credit. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for having me on, bro. I just, uh, you know, like you said, um, you know, it's 2021. Uh, I spent this morning looking at these pictures of 2020. And it was like, you know, the caption was no, you know, you might have seen it it's floating around LinkedIn. And it said, no, this is not a new zombie movie. These are pictures from 2020. And it was just pictures from all around the world where it was like, unreal like empty beaches and empty highways and one person standing in Times Square, you know, and people in hazmat suits spraying fog out of canisters that they have on their backs and body bags and all, oh my gosh. Like we just went through so much that we weren't really um, expecting. And, you know, and one thing that was really cool about the pandemic, there's nothing cool about the pandemic, but the fact that we have technology and the ability to communicate with each other during all this, right? You know, what if all this had gone on, you know, 50 years ago before the internet? Like, and so I'm, I'm 37 years old and, and I've been in technology long enough to know that technology changes so fast nowadays that not only are people used to technology changing fast, they expect technology to change fast. And technology has infiltrated the minds, the subconscious minds of how we think, feel, know, act, and believe and interact with everybody else on a daily basis. I mean, people get impatient when they have to wait for their phone to take like two extra seconds to load a page. They would rather reset the whole process. You know, we have shootings all over the place. Like people are just impatient people. And then here comes crypto. The, the one problem that everybody in the world has is we're all trying to make money, right? And crypto comes along and for the first few years, everybody thought it was a joke and it was only used by this and that and the other thing. It's only used by drug dealers, it's only used for the black market. And then it started becoming a little bit famous and more people started in investing in it. I'm doing finger quotes. I'll get back to what this means in a few minutes. But we have got to get past this idea that one crypto or technology as a whole is an answer or two nobody really has taken the time to ask themselves why is it that the year fought for years and years we fought for five or ten or twelve percent returns or twenty percent returns per year why can i make a thousand percent in a day and how does that make sense okay so um, since we're doing this video, I'm going to provide you some images that you can work in to the recording so that people can see some charts, you know. And so, uh, so for instance, today I was looking at uh, I was looking at my Toro account 
Um, I'm not saying that, you know, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with making money in crypto, but understand what it is. And so whenever, when I was on my way home, I was listening to KRLD, they said the stock market is down right now, but the NASDAQ is breaking records. So how is it that some stocks are failing and some stocks are doing being successful versus why is it on my crypto exchange, I can see the exact falls in the exact rises in every single coin. And it's because crypto is not regulated. Crypto is being controlled and manipulated by people with a whole lot more money and experience than you, you, you person, you right there that is speculating, not investing. You are following market trends and rumors and listening to famous billionaires who are telling you to put your hard earned saved money that you barely had into something so that they can control the market by buying more currency or selling more currency. They 100% control the market. And by they, I mean people with billions or trillions of dollars at their, in their hands that can make something rise 20 or 50 or 600% in an hour and make something go down. They buy low in the dips, they sell high at the peaks, they manipulate you when you should be saving your money, investing in real estate, investing in your own small business. The only thing that crypto is, is some made up currency that someone came up with when they discovered that blockchain was an efficient use of a decentralized ledger. That's it. You can apply anything to the decentralized letter, ledger. You can apply shipping routes for, um, um, for a trucking company. You can have apartment complexes all around the world paying rent into one place. There are so many applications that a ledger such as blockchain is used for, but somebody discovered that we can we can use a whole lot of electricity that we shouldn't be using to get computers to ask questions to other computers that they don't really need to be asking because it doesn't matter. And then we can take this amount of energy that's being consumed and we can put a perceived value on it. And then we can trick a whole bunch of broke people into investing it, making them think that they are going to get rich by doing what we are doing. Anthony, that's crypto. And people are investing in it right now. Trillions of dollars while we air this, you know, while we record this podcast. That's scary. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And even before we got on the show, I was telling Jason, I'm not a big crypto fan. I never was, never, I never understood it. I think it was, you know, a wise man. His name was Warren Buffett, if we ever heard of him. Uh, he said, if you don't understand mm-hmm. something, then don't invest in it. So for me, right. I don't understand it. Um, you explained it perfectly. Um, I understand that. And it, to me, it, 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 you know, it's very speculative. And um, again, what you said was key. What's wrong with 8%, 10%? You know, if you can hit a 20% IRR, great. But What's wrong with the eight to 10% a year? I mean, if you look at the stock market over the past five, 10 years, it's still, you know, at that level or maybe a little bit under. Uh, it, what's wrong with that? Um, right. And how do we, you know, and this is part of my show, it's an educational journey. So how do we go back to educating more people who are listening, whether you have your money in crypto or you're considering it or not, um, or any type of foreign, you know, and I use the word foreign loosely, investment that you just don't understand to really get educated and, and invest in things that are tangible and, and make sense. How do we go back to that, Jason? Yeah, you know, I, I break down investors in a few different categories. I, I think it really falls into 
um, stock, real estate. Um, you know, stock can have mutual funds and everything in it. And then you have real estate that can multifamily commercial that can be anything. And then you have businesses. Um, I prefer the, the small business investment, you know, and you can make a lot of money in software and technology by getting in with um, software companies, private software companies before they go public and hit the stock market. Um, but you, you also need to make sure that you're uh, investing in a company that has something tangible, that has the ability to make profits, and employ people. And it's something that people use, you know, like a Shopify or a Facebook, yes, we can talk all day about how these companies really create their value, but that's not what we're trying to do right now. The simple fact is, is anyone with any inner, like with any amateur level of development experience can create a crypto coin. And they can put blogs out that say, this is the next big thing. And they can put money behind it and have a billionaire or two talk about it. And people will pour hundreds of billions of dollars into it. But that doesn't mean it's valuable. That's called perceived value. Because if the server that held that coin ever started on fire, then the money's gone. If uh, an apartment complex or a property were to be destroyed by a fire, insurance would cover it, it would be rebuilt. A company that would go bankrupt could have a way to pay back their investors, they could reorganize, they could have, hire the right management team and they can come back profitable. But when you take money that you spent and you put it into a digital format that if you forgot your password, then it could be lost forever, that's not real. That's, that's not real wealth, that's nothing. And so I believe what we need to do, Anthony, as educators is one, we need to start wearing t-shirts that say rule of 72. And whenever somebody says, what's the rule of 72, we can go and put our arm around them and we can say, come with me, buddy. Let me show you how you can work really hard to double your money in the next five to seven years. And if we were teaching people that, then I think a whole lot of people would go, wow. But the problem is, is no matter how much education you and me try to give, we don't have as much money and reach as the people that are controlling and manipulating the markets. So we just got to keep educating, man. We have to have talks like this. We have to purposefully reach out to others and everybody needs to start. Man, I was in the gym the, uh, I was in the gym the other day, Anthony. Dude, I've worked in gyms, in and out of gyms for years. I was a trainer, I was a nutritionist. I wrote a book about helping 500 people lose 9,000 pounds in a case study. I mean, like I've, I've been doing my thing. Not only that, but I'm also a pretty confident guy. I don't mind walking up to an absolute stranger and letting them know that they're gonna hurt themselves because of what they're doing in the gym. And I saw a girl that was deadlifting way too much. No solid form. Her back was like a cat's arch. Uh, and she was lifting way too much and slamming the weight into the ground. And I have seen fingers come off. I have seen legs snap. I've seen muscles detach themselves from tendons. I have seen um, uh, 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 all kinds of mess of, uh, I've seen vertebrae pop. I, I've seen bad stuff having worked in gyms for a while. I walked over to her to let her know about her form, showed her how to do it correctly. Um, and even suggested that she take the weight off. And then here comes this guy that comes over and gets in my face. 
and he's like, he's like, what are you doing? This is gym etiquette 101. Do you know her? Does she ask for your help? You don't ever walk up to somebody that's in the gym and tell them what to do if they didn't ask you for it, man. You don't do that, bro. What? And my buddy Andy was with me. And Andy said, this is a really good example of somebody doing the right thing versus somebody thinking they're doing the right thing. Somebody doing good versus somebody thinking they're doing good. I was trying to stop someone. He didn't even know the girl. I was trying to stop somebody from being injured. He wanted to pick a fight with somebody that day. Not only, I mean, before COVID, our level of community was, <laughs> Anthony, I'm, man, this might not have anything to do with multifamily, okay? Before COVID, we were already losing our sense of community as, as humans. We, Americans, we're so mean, man. We are cowards driving cars that get mad when somebody tries to legally pass us because we don't want our feelings hurt that somebody's going to go faster than us in the car, but we don't want to let them buy. And we cut in lines at grocery stores and people shoot each other in the middle of the night and people do, people abuse their spouses and people, man, people don't pay attention to their kids. This is America. What happened to that? It's like we had this dream and we sold it to the rest of the world and everybody else is doing it. While we just kind of uh, become the labor force for the rest of the world. And that's kind of the direction where we're headed. If we don't start remembering that we're Americans, we're here to help each other. We're here to build our neighbor and support our brother under God, indivisible. And we've forgotten that. This goes above and beyond crypto. This has to do with the fact that people have been lied to and manipulated for so long that we've just completely lost touch with reality. And we think that reality is inside our phones. We think that reality is inside our TV. I was talking about Mark Wahlberg the other day and I was like, man, could you imagine telling Tom Cruise or Mark Wahlberg or any of these actors 10 years ago that in 10 years from now, you're going to be making movies, making less, and putting them on an app? They would have laughed at you. We, as educators, as leaders, need to recognize that our ability to lead and educate goes outside this podcast, Anthony. It is face-to-face -face each and every day. And every single time a leader sees the opportunity to lead online, offline, you take it because that is why God put you here to lead. Nobody put you here to lead to talk about an opportunity in the quiet to the cashier because you really don't believe in your opportunity. Nobody want, you know, God didn't put us here to, to hurt each other and cause each other pain and try to make money off the backs of each other and manipulate our entire ambitious, hardworking, soul cleansing work ethic that we have instilled in ourselves for generations and generations so that we could create a legacy of people who want to lay on couches and not sweat and not work and make as much money as they possibly can while doing nothing. That is the most un-American thing that I have ever heard of in my life. It is inconceivable to think 
that their forefathers, Martin Luther King, I mean, anybody that you could have put in the past where people are sitting here arguing with each other on YouTube with no education, spiting quotes from people, and we, we have the audacity to do that, to throw those quotes in other people's faces when we are not half the character, half the woman, half the man. We don't have the ambition. We don't have the work ethic. We don't have the sense of character to do the right thing at the right time. You always take the opportunity to do the right thing at any time, and you never take the opportunity to do the wrong thing to anyone. You know what the wrong thing is right now, Anthony, when it comes to this show? Telling your friends to invest in cryptocurrency. That's the wrong thing because you made $5. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> when it comes to investments, we need to all jump back to reality. Look at coin for what it is. It's a game. If you're gonna invest in coin, don't spend any more money on crypto than you would on the lottery each month. I mean, I think that's fair. Yeah. You know, nobody went broke playing the lottery. Um, as far as real estate and returns goes, let's start teaching people the simple math of how to double their money. I agree. I agree. Let's start teaching. Let's start teaching people that when they put money in a good business or in real estate, that that money can't really disappear. It can have ups and it can have downs, but it can't disappear overnight without, le like without legal repercussions. That, that sounds pretty awesome. You know, um, when it comes to what are we going to have to do to get past these ideas, man? Next question. We, we, yeah, we just all need to work on, on waking up. Leaders need to come out and do the right thing when the right thing needs to be done and realize that we don't need to wait to see the wrong thing being done before we can do the right thing. I mean, if, if we wake up every day knowing that we're Americans, we're children of God, we're here for a purpose, we, we are here to love our brother and sister and, and our neighbor. And if we start getting back to that, man, then we can start becoming the American dream again. It's just gonna take a lot more of us waking up and a lot more of us talking to people about it. Um, being willing to stand up for what's right. And, and, and sadly, we live in a world of, of followers that wanna be entertained. So if anybody is a follower that wants to be entertained, that was listening to this podcast so that they could sit on their butt and not invest in real estate, but live vicariously through Anthony and his podcast, you know, then maybe this is the wake up call that you needed to go, you know what, I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna sweat today. I'm going to do something healthy for myself or my body. I'm going to um, I'm going to make somebody's day today. I'm going to take what I'm good at and I'm going to provide as much value to people with that thing as I possibly can and work for it, work really hard for it. And and don't don't let taking a break become your day. Become, let, let taking, a, taking a break and being able to sit back and relax and earn money is what you and me worked really hard for. It is absolutely incredulously insulting for somebody to believe that they are entitled to not do it. And so that's it, man. We need to wake up and work, 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 work. <laughs> You know, start creating some things, start doing some things, take the free time that you have and create a business. Not everybody needs to be a millionaire or a billionaire, or we need to stop watching Shark Tank, you know, realize that it's just information or, or just entertainment. Stop thinking that we can come up with an idea and get a million dollars for it and just find something we're really good at. 
Most people don't want to be a millionaire, man. They might think they want to, but if they knew the responsibility that it took to really manage that much money, I think most people would be really satisfied with a small business, maybe investing in a property or two with some friends and family, getting, you know, if I had an extra $500 a month coming in from a property that I jumped in on Anthony with, $500 a month is huge to so many people. And if you were to jump in a deal with Anthony where there was $500 on the table, I can almost guarantee that the $500 a month would come and it would come and it would come. And regardless of what happened with crypto or if the power went out or whatever, it would come and it would come and you would have legal recourse if it didn't. It all makes sense to me, man. You know, yeah. maybe sometimes people just need to see it from a different perspective. My perspective is crypto was created to get you people to put your hard earned money in there because somebody knows more about software than you do. That's all. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, it's, it's great, great way to put it in that perspective too. And, and speaking to just the everyday people, like even in myself included, who didn't really, and still well, now I, I, I understand it better than that you've explained it, but in general, uh, I think it's the message that many Americans need to hear, you know, don't invest in something you're not comfortable with or don't understand. And especially given the asset, we, it's not even an asset. So I hate to call it an asset class that we're talking right. about. Um, it's, it's scary. So, and, and like you said, where does it go from here? We all need to, you know, love each other and help each other and, you know, communicate um, that, you know, that's not the right path to go down if you want to be financially free because of the speculation. Right. And, you know, it comes right. down to education. So uh, really appreciate your time today, Jason. Uh, we got to wind down now, but this was a very enlightening conversation. How can my listeners get in touch with you if they want to learn more about you? Uh, you can just go to jasoncriddle.com. Um, I'm about to relaunch some pretty cool uh, education material and stuff in the Jason app. Anybody can go into the app store and download the Jason app. It's just, it's nothing. I mean, <laughs> you know, um, and they can find me on Quora. Um, that's, that's my social media hub nowadays. I just kind of hang out on there. It's just an app where you, people ask questions and people answer questions. And I've been writing on there for a couple of years. I've written a couple million words, have a few million views, you know, and so if somebody wants to go on there and ask me a question about business or investments, or somebody wants to ask me a question about crypto, they're more than welcome to. All they got to do is go on there, find Jason Criddle, put in a question and I'll answer it. Awesome. Well, Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, my listeners, if you can please write us a rating or leave us a rating and write us a review. We really appreciate it. It would help Jason and myself get our message out to a greater audience. So thanks again, Jason, for coming on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you.